Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond, and in this video, I want to showcase the Pickle Rick CTF from tryhackme.com. So I'll hop on over to my screen and we'll get to the good stuff. This is the Pickle Rick room that says a Rick and Morty CTF, help Rick turn back into a human. Uh, I've joined the room here and we can start to roll through them. I'm going to go ahead and deploy the machine, deploy the virtual machine on this task and explore the web application. So I will fire up a terminal here so I can move into the try hack me directory there and I will sudo open VPN John Hammond YT because that is the account that I'm using for this one. Uh, this is a free room so I believe anyone even if you're not a subscriber should be able to access it. Let me make a directory for YT Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick. All right there we go. Pickle Rick and let's get a readme file going just so we can have a space to take notes, throw stuff in. And I'll also go ahead and make a nmap directory so I can nmap the box. I will attack SC, attack ON, nmap initial, and let's grab the IP address now that that should be spun up. Um, let me go ahead and ping this box. Yep, okay, looks like he's good. Far up that nmap scan. Uh, while that's going, we can start to build out our notes. I'll export the IP address so we can save that as a variable for the future. Let's do task one. Let's actually make a spot for nmap results because I just kind of throw stuff in even though I already have specific files, <laughs> might as well. Looks like there are only three questions in this room. What, are the f what is the first ingredient that Rick needs? Okay. Um, second and final, that's it. So we're just trying to find pieces of the puzzle here. There we go. And let's see what we got. So SSH is open, 80 is open on the web page. Okay, and it says Rick is super cool. Looks like that's it. Okay, let's, uh, let me copy that export command so I can work with that. I'll do the same down here. And because I know that 80 is running, I will fire up a little Nikto scanner and I'll tee that results to nikto.log. He can go and let's go check some things out. We can poke around. We could try and brute force SSH with Hydra. That would be a little lame because we don't exactly know where we're going yet. So let's just grab the IP address and go interact with the website. It says, help Morty, I need your help. I've turned myself into a pickle again, and this time I can't change back. I need my password. I don't know what it was. Help Morty, help. So there's not a whole lot going on on this page. Let's go check it out. View the source here. It looks like we have this image. Um, we might be able to download this image and maybe check it in case there are any strings in there or things that they might be trying to hide from us. But I do see this giant gaping HTML comment that says, note to self, remember the username. Username equals Rick rules. Okay, so now we have a little bit of an inclination where maybe we could go with this if you wanted to use Hydra and like brute force this Rick rules username with some passwords to try and beat up SSH, maybe potentially log in. Um, for other enumeration, we could be running GoBuster or we could be running uh, Nikto as we're doing. So now that I mentioned GoBuster, let's actually go ahead and slap that in. Get some enumeration going in the background. So I will use GoBuster and it needs a URL. So our IP address. We'll use the word list op rock you. I think my face is in the way. No, we don't, use, we don't want to use rock you because we're not cracking passwords. We will use the directory listing. Um, that would come with Durbuster. And I'm actually going to specify TAC X to specify some file extensions that I might want to look for. I'll look for PHP, I'll look for SH, text, CGI. I like to use SH and CGI in case there's any like shell shock stuff or some of the things that might be running. Obviously, HTML, JSS, excuse me, JS for JavaScript, CSS, uh, maybe Python files too, just may as well. And um, I found index.html, that's good, that's where we already are. Uh, let's go check out that robots.txt because I saw that Nikto said robots.txt was retrieved, but it does not contain any disallow entries, which is strange. Okay. Let's go check out our robots.txt and it says wubba lubba dub dub. So perfect. Uh, let's save that in our notes. And we also have that thing as well. Maybe that wubba lubba dub might be something. If it's, if it's there, it's probably there for a reason, right? Um, our other 
GoBuster scan found a login.php. Okay, so assets portal.php. It looks like that has a status 302, so we might not be able to access that just yet, but it seems to exist. So let's hop on to go check those out. I'll go to portal.php. Oh, looks like we need to log in first. So it redirected me to login. And login has this image and a username and login. So the only pieces of information that we have thus far are this username, Rick Rules, and whatever this string is. Well, level dub dub. Obviously, the Rick and Rorty reference, but maybe that's a password. We could try to log in. Okay, looks like it logged in. No, I don't want to add that to LastPass. Thank you. <laughs> so seemingly, command panel. We execute a command. What else is in here? Only the real Rick can view this page. Potions, creatures, Beth clone. Okay, so we can't do anything with that, seemingly. Let's go poke around at this command panel and let our other things run in the background. So I will run ls. Okay. Looks like I have some interesting files here. Super secret pickle and greed dot text. Let's see what that is. Can I cat that out, please? No. Command disabled to make it hard for future pickle rick. What? Okay. What else do we have here? CD. That's its clue. I can't cat out clue. Can I just not cat out something that is a text file? Or I, okay, I can't seem to run command. Well, what can I run? Um, does dir work? Yep. I can head clue.txt. That's also disabled. Well, that's annoying. Okay, please stop losing my page when I hit the back base button or the back back button. Uh, so we know we seemingly can't run cat. Uh, and I bumped around this for a little bit of time. I was like, what can I do to read files? Uh, I like to use map file as one technique, but since that seemingly doesn't work in our case, um, we could echo something the output of clue.txt. Maybe, can we run echo? That doesn't seem to work for me. How about RAL read line? Uh, I can't run cat. While read line, do echo line. Uh, while read, not, what am I doing? <laughs> while read line, do echo that. Read in from clue.txt. Does that work? Oh, okay, excellent, it does. So that works. Um, one other technique that I thought of using was using grep. And grep tack capital R is really nice because it can work recursively. So this is gonna be a mess. I'm gonna like get the results of every file in the actual file system. Or we could actually just try grep on that clue.txt and match anything, match any characters. Did that work? Grep clue.txt period? Or is it pattern first? Grep period and then clue.txt as the file name. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so grep, the pattern you're looking for, and I'm using a period for the regular expression anything, and I'm also going to be using that file name. We could use that grep tech R and search for the anything, and that will return all of the files in this folder, which looks a little messy, but if we go check out the source code, we can probably make sense of it because it thankfully will showcase the lines that we're reading. So this will actually let us see the source code as well because we're just catting out, not really, but using grep or using that while read technique to read a file. I like the while read technique because those are all built-ins. While is a built-in, read is a built-in, echo is a built-in. So that technique might be useful in other situations even more than this. But it looks like we can see that PHP code. So we found robots.txt, found our denied page, found the index. Oh, and also found the login page. That's kind of cool. Okay. So it's verifying the credentials that we found. What else do we have? Okay. Super secret ingredient number one is Mr. Misi Care. Cool. Look around the file system for the other ingredients. That's our clue. We could navigate, move stuff around, but oh, this is the portal page. And that will check with the contains function if we have some string inside of another string, some of the commands here. Okay, so it looks like we have a blacklist in place for commands that we can run or can't run. Um, cat, head, more, tail, nano, vim, and vi. That's not a lot, that's not a lot of commands. That actually gives us a lot of options, right? So uh, we also have some base64 string. What is this? Let's try this. Um, let's make Nito go away. For those of you that have already completed this room, uh, you might already know what this is. Um, and I'm just gonna showcase it because for completeness sake and 
being thorough. Um, but it looks like it's nested base 64, like recursive base 64. So I keep adding on a base 64 attack D over and over and over again. And you're seeing the output, it's base 64, it's also seeing some other missteps. But I will base 64 attack D repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly until I get the answer rabbit hole, which is uh, <laughs> a little mean. I spent all that time and we, we wasted it. Okay. So that's it. There's, there's no real results to get from that. Uh, but we know we have command execution. We know we have a blacklist for commands that we can't work with. We've found our way to mitigate not being able to run cat. We can still read files with that while read line t technique and we can use grep. So uh, now we want to probably leverage this more so we can actually move around the file system in a sane way, not just through this stupid web interface. So let's try and get a reverse shell. Let's see if we have netcat. I think that's a fine option. If we use netcat tack H maybe, it doesn't seem to run netcat tack tack version. I don't seem to get any command output from that. So maybe that's not actually there. Nope. Oh, cat isn't that name. So that's just going to yell at it. And I keep hitting the back button. So what could we do to get a reverse shell? We could try to use Python. I'm just gonna verify that we actually have Python working, whether or not it's Python 2 or Python 3. So if I print out with just regular Python, it doesn't work for me. Uh, I could specify Python 3, and that looks like it does get some, some output for me. So what we could do is we could use the pen test monkey reverse shell cheat sheet, and we could just modify, hey, the Python one-liner that we have to go ahead and give us a shell by using not just Python as a command, but Python 3, if I add that in there. So I am going to need to, I guess, modify this to get our IP address. So I do actually need that terminal. What is my current IP address? Showtown 0, 8, 9, 1, 12. Weird, oddball. And let's use a port 999 or quad 9, and let's use Python 3. So let's close that shell out and get back to our regular shell. And let's netcat lnvp quad 9. And now we can go try and go execute that command because we know that Python 3 should work for us. So if I hit execute, looks like that's not responding. It's probably executing it and we have a shell. Excellent. Okay, so this is kind of a crappy shell, just as we normally do when we run like netcat reverse shells. We don't have our tab autocomplete or up and down command history or left and right arrow keys. So it's very, very frustrating and we could accidentally control C. So I've showcased in other videos the uh, stabilized shell technique using Python, taxi, PTY, um, and creating it with STTY raw minus echo and exporting the term environment variable. So I actually do that uh, with my poor man's pen test project. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I it might come in handy, poor man's pen test. That's in my GitHub. It's just using Gwake to uh, send some keys that could automate the process of your interaction on a web shell or on a reverse shell uh, and even upload and download files, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna actually use Gwake and I will run my stabilized shell three script because if I actually check out what that is, stabilized shell three, let's go ahead and subble that so you can see what that source code looks like. I just use Python three to run the PTY and make my terminal in raw mode and turn off echo. So I get a stable shell. It's just an automated way. So I don't have to type it and mistype it all the time that I do. And, uh, we know that it's going to be using Python three because we just tested in Python as a command itself. Doesn't really seem to be on the box. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and run stabilize shell, which is in my prompt. So I don't need the dot slash stabilize shell three. And okay. Now we have a stable dub, dub, dub data. Um, this is also handy because we could actually use some of the other upload file functionalities. So um, I don't have netcat. Do I actually have netcat? Did it just not want to work for me? Yeah, it does. Whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and use some of the functionality that we have built out to upload linps. And that'll go ahead and put it in uh, dev shm, kind of a hidden directory. So if I wanted to do my enumeration, I don't have to deal with creating the socket or netcatting things and doing it. It just kind of finding my IP address and all that crap. It'll just get linps or whatever file I really wanted to on the box as fast as I can. So pretty helpful for King of the Hill stuff as well. Um, scrolling through this, we found some interesting information. data may run the following command. 
everything <laughs> as sudo without a password. So we could just as easily sudo bash and be root. And that's it. That, okay, now we've owned the box. We've owned that machine. So uh, what else are we gonna be looking for? Well, in the home directory of root, looks like we found our third ingredient. That's that. Let's go ahead and I guess go submit that. Nothing to stop us. Oh, and I, I never added the Mr. Me Seek hair. Is that right? Yeah, cool. What else do we have here? What else could we find for that second argument? Uh, looks like he's in Rick, maybe? Second ingredients, yeah. Cat that out. One Jerry tier. And just like that, we finish the room and own that box. So, to recap, just some command injection to the webpage some robots.txt to find stuff, some Durbuster with PHP extensions to find our login. Um, the command injection didn't allow us to run common commands like cat because it had a blacklist going. We can still evade that. Uh, my built-in technique that I really like is a while read line, um, echo things out and redirect into it. That is helpful because even in a command shell where you don't have grep, that would work because it, those are all built-in commands. We use grep to work because we can read out all the files nice and easily, find the source code, know that blacklist, and then we were able to determine, okay, what can we use in this machine to get a reverse shell? Python, Python 3 in this case, just needed to add that 3 there because Python's still on the box, but not the just flat, regular Python command. Use Python 3, get our reverse shell. I like to use my poor man's pen test project because it just automates a lot of things. Um, we actually have the Python 3 reverse shell in there, so I could just slap that in it. And stabilizing the shell and uploading linps and doing the reconnaissance that maybe we wouldn't have done naturally. But if, okay, if I were dubbed up to data, I could just simply sudo attack L and know that. So that's something maybe we could do manually. We should do manually, but linps will take care of that. So, okay. That's that video. That's Pickle Rick. That, <laughs> that's the Try Hack Me Room. Kind of kind of fun, kind of simple, kind of good, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did like this video, please do press that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the comment button, and then type things in and hit the enter button so you enter a comment. <laughs> uh, all right. Love to see you guys on Discord server. Love to see you on Patreon, PayPal, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of the things. Have a great day. Bye.